everybody, welcome back. This is the video that I've been meaning to post for a while, but it is finally gonna happen. Today, I wanna go over real quick what we are using in the garden this year. This is probably our biggest thing that we have changed um, in regards to the garden and how we're growing things. Um, and that is this DeWitt weed barrier. Now, this is a 10 foot roll. Uh, they come in very various sizes all the way down to four foot by 100 foot. Um, even higher than a 10 foot roll width wise. We got the 10 foot roll just because the sizes of our gardens, that is what was going to work best um, for our needs. And this is actually left over from what we used in both gardens. So we've got a little bit to play around with if we want to extend the gardens or place it somewhere else. Before I go into too much detail and take you through the gardens to show what I like about it, um, we're gonna go back in time to this spring when we first got this out and put it in the gardens and the methods that we used to not only lay this down, put it in the gardens, but to also put the holes in the fabric, which is where we put the plants, um, the spacing that we used and how we went about it. There was actually two methods that we ended up using the first one I had made a template out of a board and we were good to, just going to use a torch and burn the holes through it but it just did not work as well physically as it did in my head uh, so what we ended up doing is still using that same template um, but then we marked the holes and went through and we actually had a guy at the shop he built us a little I guess you could call it a hole punch um, for this material. So you'll see all that um, in the upcoming little video clips. And then after we go about how we prepped the garden and put it in the garden, the installation process, I'll take you out to see where we are now about midway through our gardening season. All right, push it, buddy. Kick it out there. Can you roll it? All right, get it, buddy. To begin this process, we unrolled our weed barrier. As you can see, we had to have picked the windiest day possible to do this. But we unrolled it out. You can see we kind of put some stones on there just to help hold it down until we could take the staples or the stakes and drive it down into the perimeter and along some of the yellow lines you see there on the barrier. How many stakes or how many staples you want to put in it, that is completely up to you. We probably over stapled ours, but we would rather have too many than not enough. And Darren is stapling them here on the very, very end. I will say we double folded them under, some of them I think we even tripled it, folded it so that it wouldn't unravel on the ends. Moving along to the template that I used in marking and burning the holes in the weed barrier, I took a two inch bit here. I drilled holes every six inches on the board. I chose six inches because that would be easy math if, for instance, like the corn, we have it spaced every 12 inches. So it would be every two holes if the holes are six inches apart. So I figured with anything you could have six inches, 12 inches, 18, 24, and for instance, like the tomatoes, every 36 inches. So that, that was just the, the template that I made that I thought we could utilize and it did work very very well. I also put two lines one on each end of the board and that is what we use for a guide so you would line up the line at one end of the board to the yellow line on the barrier and the line on the other end of the board we would line up to the yellow line on the barrier and that's how we knew that we would be marking the center of. As you can see I have a line marked here with the white paint. I did try to burn the holes with a torch and it just was too windy and the torch wasn't working right upside down so I just laid the board down spray painted within the holes and and you're fixing to see how we went along burning the holes through the barrier now I can't take credit for this contraption that you see I'm using here uh, one of the guys at the shop built this for us specifically for burning holes in the barrier but what we did, we built a fire, and you're going to want a pretty hot fire, and stuck it down in there, let it get real, real good and hot, and as you can see, it just melts right through that barrier. As it melts, it kind of seals the edges of the hole that you're burning, so you don't have to worry about it fraying or unraveling or anything. Um, unfortunately, the ground was still cold and wet and damp, so I couldn't go too far before the pipe would get 
cold and just wouldn't make a clean burn through the barrier. So it, it was a slow process, but I will say by building a fire and letting it stay down in the fire, we were able to go further than using a torch because we did originally try heating up the pipe with a torch and you're much better off building a fire. Okay, here we are in the upper garden and I'm gonna separate the two gardens just because the setup that we have for both gardens is different. So this upper garden is one that we've had for several years. Um, when I say several, I mean like 10 plus. So this is a pretty good garden, but what I decided to do this year is use this just for kind of our smaller root vegetable garden. So I had the onions over there. We had radishes at the very, very end. I do have some cabbage planted back there since I've pulled the radishes. Uh, we've got rows of carrots. We have part of a row of onions. The rest of that is also carrots. Uh, and then this last row over here is another set of onions. Now, as I said previously, we bought the 10 foot rolls. As you can kind of see, this garden is a little bit wider than 10 foot. It's probably about 12 foot wide, approximately 30 foot long. So the 10 foot roll almost took care of this entire garden. Uh, I didn't worry too much about that side. On this side, we had about a foot overhang, hence the sunflowers. And that worked out real well anyways, because I needed somewhere to plant the sunflowers. So with the extra space, that was, that was great. But what we did with this garden, we rolled it out and then the holes in this one are placed every six inches. And what you'll notice with the DeWitt weed barrier, there are yellow lines. Those lines are every 12 inches. So it was super simple to get your measurements and to calculate how far apart and how you wanted it. Just for ease of things, I burnt the holes on the yellow lines. So I've actually got two foot in between each row of produce. You don't have to do that. That was just my preference and how I kind of wanted to set it up. So for all five rows that are burnt in this barrier, they are all six inches apart. We do try to rotate the crop. So if we do this garden again with this piece of barrier, I might just switch up where I have the placement of things. Amongst all of the pros to this, the con that I would say to the barrier fabric is once the holes are burnt, it's permanent. Um, which is nice come springtime whenever you're setting up your garden, but if you want to plant different things from year to year or move your pieces of fabric, you're kind of stuck with okay, what can I put six inches apart? What can I utilize with these holes? But just so you have an idea of one setup of the weed barrier. The holes we burnt were three inch holes. They're just about perfect for the onions. It may have even been more beneficial to maybe go to like a four inch hole or a little bit bigger, but onions don't like to be down in the soil and the dirt anyways. They kind of like to be on top. So honestly, even a bigger hole may not be any more beneficial than the three inches that we that we burned. But now that we've seen this one, let's go down to the lower garden. Hopefully you can hear me over our Purple Martins. I'm not gonna complain. We've been trying to get those for years and we've got a great colony set up with 24, 25 babies. So hopefully you can hear me over those. But anyways, we are down here in the lower garden. This is where we've got a lot of the larger garden plants. You can see over here, I've got some corn. The middle section here, this is green beans. What you can't see are the tomatoes, but I will show you that setup. Um, here in just a little bit, the tomatoes and the peppers. But this lower garden here, we used three sections of the weed barrier. So it's about 30 foot wide by, I wanna say it's like 40 foot long. So about 1200 square foot. But the setup that I did down here, we've got the one section of barrier over here, and that is strictly the corn. Uh, the holes that I burnt with the corn, once again, I burnt it on the yellow lines, and I did every other. So there's two foot between each row. I've got four rows of corn. I did do one small section about half the length 
um, at one period of time and then I waited a couple weeks and I did another for like a succession of corn so it's not coming all in at once. But with the corn, we burnt the holes one foot apart. Now next year or in years down the road, if we wanna switch things up a little bit, I could put green beans or other things in those holes at one foot apart. Um, that's not a big deal. The middle section though, we have this whole section for green beans. Or if I wanted to, it could be the carrots, the onions, uh, radishes, the smaller root vegetables such as what we had in the upper garden but we did the green beans six inches apart every other row and one thing about this method when you burn these holes it is so much more uniform and you can get so many more plants within the space so just in this one 10 by 40 foot section I've got 300 holes for green beans or whatever I decide to plant in them. I know whenever we first burnt them all and I told Darren, holy cow, there's 300 holes for green beans, we both about flipped because it seems like a lot of plants. But as you can see behind me, there's lots of bare spots. Um, not a downfall on the barrier. What you're seeing with the holes and the beans that haven't germinated is the soil. We have got to work the soil up this fall. Uh, it gets very very hard we need compost peat moss we, we really need to work it up and get it a lot looser the beans have just had problems sprouting because it gets so hard um, but that is probably the biggest benefit I mean besides fewer weeds is the uniformness that you can get your garden and how many more plants you can get in it because you're being so uniform uh, when you burn the holes now, let's say next year I want to rotate these a little bit. I can just take the 10 foot section and put it wherever I want. So I could take the 10 foot section that I had the corn and maybe move it up here. And I could take the 10 foot section that I had of green beans, move it down here. I can kind of flip flop those however I want. And basically the section that we cut would be one variety of produce. I'm going to turn the camera around and show you the setup that we have for the tomatoes and the peppers. Okay, with this 10 foot section, we have the tomato and pepper plants. This I left a lot more space in between. I've got three foot of space between the edge of the section and the first set of plants or the panel. Another three foot and then another three foot on the other side of the last row of tomatoes. For several years now we have set the tomatoes and the peppers up using hog cattle panels rather than the cages. They can breathe better and it is just easier. Easier access for the tomatoes, easier to kind of spread the plant out so it can breathe. Here in southeast Missouri it gets very very humid um, and that's actually kind of a problem for tomato plants. You want to be able to have airflow and let them breathe. So if you haven't looked into this setup this is one of many. I'm not saying this is the best or anything, but this is the best that has worked for us. Now, one thing that I am going to do different next year is I'm going to raise these a little bit higher and maybe have the bottom of the panel 18 inches or two foot from the ground so that the tomatoes have more support as they grow taller. Uh, you can see back here in this back row, they're already a foot 18, 18 inches to almost 24 inches above the top of the panel, they don't have any support. Um, that was just a mistake on mine. But you live and learn, that's the life of gardening. But for the setup that we have um, with the barrier of the tomatoes and the peppers, we have them windowed. So for this section, uh, tomato and peppers, what I did was window the plants for one on each side of the panel. So you can see a tomato plant here. Um, three foot is another tomato plant. Another three foot is a tomato plant, but you'll notice one in between. I've got 18 inches between these two holes. I was hoping maybe windowing them would help let them have space, but then also utilize it a little bit better so I didn't have so much empty space. So it depends on how you want to look at the spacing on that. Um, on one side of the panel, they're every three foot. 
but if you look at the yellow line in general, it's every 18 inches, almost like a zigzag windowed. With this type of spacing, this section of barrier will strictly be for tomato spacing. Peppers can be spaced a lot closer. Um, I think they do like to be placed closer, but we didn't need that many pepper plants. And I was just trying to utilize that kind of spacing the best I could. Down the road, if I want to, I may use the one foot spacing for the corn and just have a section of peppers. But for right now, we just spaced them with the tomatoes. So to kind of wrap this video up, I wholeheartedly believe the DeWitt weed barrier is worth it, worth every penny. But there are several things to note. It is going to be an investment. Um, this isn't the cheapest route for a garden, but you gotta figure in your time. And whenever I proposed this to Darren, um, that was kind of the way I did it. It's going to be an investment, but it's going to be multi-year investment. Um, this is not something you use and throw away after one year. There are people that have used this fabric year after year for 10 plus years and they're still using it. Um, it's made to stay in the sun. You can actually leave this year round. We will not, um, just because we like to work our garden up and we need to work our garden up, but you can leave this down year round and not have to worry about the sun or damage to it. They've got a warranty on it. Water can go through, water can actually seep back up uh, I've went in here before a couple days after a rain and as I'm walking water will actually seep back up. So water can go through it both ways, which is something you want. You want your plants to have water. Um, it actually keeps it cooler than you think. You would think with it being black it would be really really hot. Um, that's not the case. It's actually pretty cool underneath. But the biggest thing you got to keep in mind is with this being an investment, how much is your time worth? Um, with two kids, and we are both very busy with work schedules, we don't have time to come out here for multiple hours trying to weed this. This lower garden is not as established as the other one, uh, so we do have a heavy weed problem down in this garden. But we figured it up, and between the two gardens, we spent, it was two or two and a half hours this spring installing this barrier. Now, we had never done it before, so it, it probably took longer than it should have, but for us, that's the amount of time it took for us to lay it out, cut it, stake it down, and then you still have your time of burning the holes, but that's only the first year. Next year, the only thing we have to worry about is laying it out and staking it down, and we're done. So two and a half hours at the beginning of spring, I have maybe spent two hours probably total weeding both gardens since then. And we've had this down since March, I think it was. I think we laid this down in March. We're in June now. Prime time for weeds and weeds to take over. So it has more than paid for itself if I include the amount of time that I usually take weeding. So from my perspective, this is worth the initial investment that you will make for this fabric. I would try to leave as much information down below as I can in regards to the name of the specific barrier that we have. Um, outlets you can find it. I know you can go online to growersolution.com. They sell it. You can also find it on Amazon, eBay. Like I said, we found it local um, through a wholesaler near us down here in, in southeast Missouri. If there's any more specific questions, comment below. I will try to give you as much information as I know or sources where you can find this information. I'm just trying to give a good overview of what this is, how we utilize it, and why we got it this year. If you found this video, this information helpful, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Share it with family, friends. Get the word out about this barrier if you know they are into gardening. If you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. We would love to have you stick around. This is the first of many 2021 gardening videos. Go ahead and check out our other videos from years prior. And until next time, thanks for stopping by and happy gardening.